Hi guys, welcome to this action discussion video. And today we are going to talk about the Lysix mind map and their super dreadnoughts and their pretty awesome uh, bombardment abilities. And as always, because I think it is time to say as always <laughs> yeah. now, it's the third time. And uh, welcome to Utah. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Esa, and thanks for being here. Yeah, again. Yes. It's uh, funny to make those videos here. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I, I truly enjoy them as well, uh, often because I get some insights from you and I get challenges uh, on what I actually thought was a good idea. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, but, but in this video, um, we'll talk about what we want to accomplish, each of us, in the first game round. And I think the Lysix 6 mind map is a little bit more challenging that uh, that both Ghost and Nomad, uh, as we talked about uh, before the camera started here. Then I think we should talk about the strengths and the weaknesses for this faction, because I think, yeah, they have a pretty strong strengths and pretty strong weaknesses uh, as well. Um, and then we should talk about what technologies to research. And I think there are different paths we can go here as well. So I think that's, that will be pretty interesting. And then lastly, uh, how do we actually win playing this faction? <clears throat> well, let's jump uh, directly into it uh, and have a look at what we want to accomplish in the first round. And I think we should also cover what strategy cards we think will support uh, whatever we want to accomplish in the first round the best. So uh, we'll also go through all of these uh, in this segment. But uh, so, what would you like to accomplish as the Life 6 Mindnet in round one? Um, taking two uh, adjacent uh, systems, we have uh, two ships with capacity and the Dreadnought, important to remember, it has uh, two capacity. So it can go out and take uh, a two-plan system and we have the carrier to take a two-plan system. Uh, and we have the five infantry and I would leave the fifth infantry in our home system so I can make it to a mech with our agent when we activate to produce in our home system. So that's the basic uh, start for the first round and it's a, yeah, it's a good start and we don't have yeah, any problems to getting the two systems. Um, what I would accomplish uh, besides that, it's, it highly depends on, on the map and uh, what the, the other players uh, take of strategy cards. Um, I think that Lysix has some uh, strong sides and some uh, weaknesses uh, and the weaknesses I would like to um, to mitigate with the, with a lot of checks. So I would really like to have check in the second round. So I would often, I think, go for politics in the first round so I can be sure to get check in the second round and uh, double check. We have our five resource home system. So, so it's fairly easy for us to uh, to to double check in the second round. Uh, if not politics, then uh, leadership would be uh, a preferred choice. We will always lack inf uh, lack influence since our home system home system don't have any influence, and, uh, and thereby we could lack uh, command tokens. So, so uh, leadership or politics would would be my two preferred choices in the first round. Ah, that's interesting. I don't entirely agree uh, here, so uh, but I think that's good. Um, I totally agree with, with leadership though, uh, because we really don't have any uh, abilities or anything that can help us get more command tokens. So we are highly dependent on more influence planets to make sure that we can get some command tokens. So leadership will of course uh, support for that. Uh, but what I would try to do in uh, the first round, besides getting those two systems you mentioned, is to, to use the five resources in our home system twice. Uh, but it's a little bit risky because we are dependent on some of the other players and the timing of when they play their uh, strategy cards. But since we are a true commodity faction, then I think using those five resources in the home system twice uh, can help us boost our economy from the beginning of the game. Uh, because we need a lot of resources to produce straight notes and get the technologies. I also agree with we need quite a bit of technology. So, uh, and that's, that is just costly to do. Uh, 
Mm. So besides leadership, I also think diplomacy could be a, a fairly good a strategy card to start with because there are not that many home planets that have five resources in them. Um, and there maybe one or two other factions that have that. I don't uh, quite remember. Uh, there's no faction, there's no other planet that has uh, the five resources. The Baron have six resources in the home system, but they would probably use a, a, a ready another planet than the two uh, resource planet in the home system. So, yeah. so there is no other five resource planet in the game. Fascinating memory you got there. <laughs> yes, I uh, I could remember that, but I but I do, I do think we can get a, a lot of uh, get a lot out of uh, unexhausted two planets uh, with diplomacy. And then I would try to get uh, one technology whenever the technology player uh, plays his strategy card. And then I would use um, the five resources again to produce some more units uh, in the home system. So a little bit of both. Uh, I like that approach. But there's a risk of, uh, yeah. That's yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. And I agree, uh, as I also mentioned, uh, the strategy cards is uh, highly dependent on uh, what the other players um, are taking. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, the diplomacy, yeah, the five resource in your home system, and if you have a three resource planet, also mm. that's eight resource. So I think also that's a a, a good plan. Mm. Uh, so, so if you can make sure to not get stalled out uh, or, or get a mistiming, so so yeah, it's it's also. Uh, a strategy I could see myself go into. Uh, I think it's yeah more difficult, but but yeah it's yeah it's tempting to to maybe get eight resources uh, extra use in the first round. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that was uh, leadership, diplomacy, and politics. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of uh, construction? No way. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can build seven uh, pieces of plastic in our home system, yeah. um, and that should be enough. Uh, we have other issues to uh, to tend to, so so construction, uh, not in the first round, not in the second, not in the entire game, uh, except for uh, public objectives that uh, has something to do with structures. So so I would not uh, look in the construction way. No. Oh. And I saw a little hint uh, about the assimilate uh, faction ability where we can uh, replace structures, but I guess we will come back to that uh, a little later in the video here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trade. Trade. Two commodity faction. And we have very little movement in round one with only a, a dreadnought and a carrier that can move one system. So we will have to convince other players to come to us. And then we have two commodity faction. I, I don't think it's a good choice. That would be a, a back backup plan, if <laughs> kind of a strategic card choice, in, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, I would not take. I don't think I would take trade uh, in any round, uh, except for a, a, a public objective that needs trade goods or something like that. So, 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 so no, trade would not be a preferred choice. Um, I think in any round, except for some public objectives that needs to to have trade goods, and and I think that we could get our trade goods um, in other ways, uh, and uh, we will come back to that later. Yeah, I agree. What do you think of the uh, warfare? Uh, no, um, that would also be uh, down the list. Uh, we can get our standard two uh, systems in the in the first round. And I think that's that's fine. Uh, I think uh, some of the other st strategy cards we have uh, talked about, um, yeah, it's better for us. Uh, solves some bigger problems than the warfare and uh, and the third third system. So so no, not warfare. Not not for Well, warfare is our only choice to be able to reach Megaton Rex as the first one in round two. So we can grab the system in front of our home system and then move our carrier dreadnought to the system. Next to Megaton, and if we have the 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 speaker token in the right position and we can get the right uh, strategy card, would would you ever consider trying to go for Megaton Rex as Slice X? No, that's the first one. No, no. Uh, what you said here, uh, we we 
is even if the speaker is uh, right next to us, uh, we can't be sure to get yeah the low initiative number. And and the second thing is that we have zero influence in our home system, so so we should be really lucky in our uh, slice to have uh, six influence uh, we would want to to burn on Megatol. It's also it's it's a very good point to get uh, as always, but but um, yeah. There's uh, too many things that uh, needs to be in the right place so so to us to get uh, to be a megatot race so so no I would not uh, consider that no. me neither and we are pretty good at taking planets so I guess we can <laughs> attempt to get it a, a little later yeah. in the game yeah. we can we can take it later if uh, if need to be yeah and we have technology yeah yeah. I think that's a fairly good choice. That would be my one of my preferred choices in uh, round one. Uh, again, because I like to both research one technology and produce some units uh, in our home system. So, what do you think of the technology? Would you, would you do the same or? It, it, it is a, 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 a fine choice. It's not my top three, I think. Um, if I should take technology in first round, then it should be because I would be able to double check. Uh, yeah, we have the five resource in a home system, so so if the neighbor uh, has a trade, and then and we could uh, be able to do some trading with, with one of the neighbors and, and get the uh, extra resource, then I would uh, consider trade uh, technology so I could double check. Uh, I would much rather have yeah, politics and be sure to double check in the second round. Um, yeah, but but yeah, if I, if I, if I see opportunity to double check in the first round, and uh, then I would take uh, psycho psychoarchaeology and hypermetabolism, so we could get the the token uh, machine uh, going for the first round. Um, if I could see that opportunity, I I would take technology in the first round. Yeah. And that's a really good point. Getting mega, uh, getting hyper metabolism in the first round that is just uh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that will help uh, throughout the entire game. That's for sure. Cool. And um, Imperial, Imperial first round. Not in the first round, but uh, when we have taken mega top rex later in the game, then for sure try to uh, to get that extra mega top uh, rex point. That would be uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That was it for uh, for the first segment. Let's have a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses as uh, the Lysix faction got. And I think we will also talk about some of the leaders and the technologies, but we will also talk about technologies in a separate uh, segment of the video. So um, yeah, I'll uh, leave it up to you. Do you want to start with the strengths or weaknesses or a little bit of both? Uh, a little bit of both. All right. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Lysix is obviously a very, very strong faction to take planets. Uh, they are a strong uh, faction in, in, in dice rolling. Uh, they're super dreadnoughts or dreadnoughts in... Yeah, the dreadnought 1 is uh, strong and the super dreadnought 2 is very strong. They have the ability Harrow where they bombard each after each combat round. Uh, which makes them a very strong uh, faction to take planets if they have <clears throat> enough ground forces uh, with them. So that is their strength, mm. absolute strength, and they have a lot of uh, resources yeah, in the home system, so so they can build a mass, uh, so they have a lot of dice and they uh, roll good. Uh, their weakness is, uh, on the other hand, uh, the lack of influence. They have nothing in the home system, and yeah, should be lucky to have uh, that much in the slice to to uh, make up for that. Uh, and they are two commodity factions, so they are also uh, weak in in, in, in trading uh, purely trade goods. Um, how to uh, come around those weaknesses? Uh, I think uh, it would be to get uh, hypermetabolism as quickly as possible. Uh, and I also think you should get psychoarchaeology. Uh, those two uh, uh, goes well together. Uh, the psychoarchaeology will help you with the trade goods. If you have uh, tech skips, then you can uh, exhaust your planets to get a trade good. Uh, 
Uh, and that could uh, give you some trade goods uh, you can uh, stack up if there comes a, a public objective uh, with some trade goods. So, so in that way, it could be expensive for you to uh, flip a, a tree resource planet, uh, but uh, it's a sure way to get trade goods. Uh, and that could mitigate uh, a little weakness there and the hypermetabolism uh, yeah gives you that extra command token so so it can fill up a little hole there uh, for the lack of influence mm. <clears throat> so i think that's the uh, strengths and weaknesses and how to come around them yeah yeah i i actually agree uh, so far yeah but i would like to add uh, the agent which is mm, yeah. um It is. I, th- I think it is fairly good. I mean, you can get to replace one infantry with a mech every time you activate a system. But it's while, after while produce. No, you don't have to produce. Okay. No. You you just need to activate a, a system and then you can replace a mech. Oh. So you can also do it out in the slice. Ha, even better. Uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. 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 And it's uh, a good agent. It is a good agent, but the the timing win- window. Uh, annoys me a little bit because I would really like for our infantry to fly out, especially in the first round where we get to explore planets, that we could actually replace uh, our infantry when we put down a, an infantry on a hazardous planet, for instance, and then replace it with a mech and then get the better uh, exploration opportunities. I think it's a big limiting factor that you have to activate a system where your infantry is already in that system. Um, yeah, yeah that you don't get to move the units out and then do it i agree uh, but still uh, and that was why i confused myself uh, because of production but uh, you start with the five infantry mm. and you let the one infantry uh, stay back the fifth infantry and when you activate to produce you make the infantry to a mech yes and if you <clears throat> do that every time uh, remember to build some infantry every time you build and the next time you build you build the mech and so uh, replace to have the mech and so forth so so yeah, you're right it would be even better if we could get them out on the get-go but but if you you still you will always produce in your home system and thereby get the uh, use of your agents so so i yeah I, yeah i still think it's a good agent it is still a good agent yeah i would yeah. just really wish it to be even better yeah yeah And and I guess we can also sell its ability to another player and also help with maybe a trade good or something, uh, so we could let some other player uh, use. Yeah, of course. And, and do that. Yeah, I think that's important to have in mind. Yeah, it uh, could be another way to uh, get trade goods yeah. that you otherwise would lack. And uh, yeah, and as we have talked out about before, uh, we don't uh, usually take the trade strategy card. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, I would also like to talk about uh, the commander a of little course. bit. So we need to have all five dreadnoughts out on the table, and then we get to bombard on uh, planets that have PDSs on it. Yeah. Is that uh, what do you think of that? <laughs> awesome, absolutely <laughs> awesome. Uh, it's a, <clears throat> a very strong uh, commander, and it suits very well with the six. We uh, yeah, we have uh, super dreadnoughts, and they are getting even more super and. Uh, and we would like to have our dreadnought tools, and uh, and especially when with with Harrow, we we really like to bombard, and we like to bombard any time. So so it's just yeah, a fantastic commander for this race. Uh, really 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 strong commander yeah. for this race. Um, if you you can you could sell your uh, commander alliance uh, to uh, other races, but they won't benefit as well as we do because of Harrow. So so it's really, really, really strong for us because of Harrow and okay for other races. But yeah, yeah. Really, really strong commander. Yeah, but I think it is one of the most expensive commanders to actually unlock. I mean, producing five, no, four dreadnoughts, we start with one. Yeah, yeah. So produce additional four that costs four each. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a high cost uh, to unlock him. So... I don't, but maybe we also don't need him uh, in the first couple of rounds because the other players need to have placed PDSs and we need to have a reason to take those plans. From yeah, them. yeah. So, uh, so maybe that's okay. Yeah, it's not a. Yeah, I agree. It's not a commander you have to rush for 
uh, compared to other races, uh, uh, Nomad for an example, uh, where you get to uh, build your flagship for free, mm. it could uh, benefit you more uh, the earlier you get it. Here, it's, yeah, you don't have to rush for it. No. But I still think, think you you will get your five dreadnoughts out. Uh, you yeah. you you like your dreadnoughts. We want to upgrade them, and it uh, benefits or plays into the hero as we will cover later. So we, we we like our dreadnoughts, and we have a lot of resources. We have the five in our home system, and we yeah will yeah have a lot more in the slice uh, almost no matter what. So so we will get them. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. I agree. Yeah. What about uh, some of the technologies? Um, are there any any one of those you want to highlight here in the strength weakness uh, segment? Uh, yeah, as we covered a little uh, earlier, um, as the psychoarchaeology and the the hypermetabolism um, in the second round, uh, hopefully at the latest, uh, it will get us the extra token and the psychoarchaeology helps us to uh, use the resources um, and we can get trade goods uh, in that way. So I would highlight those two and of course our Super Dreadnought too. Uh, and how we get there uh, depends on the tech skips and, and, and again Psychoarchaeology helps us there. But the Super Dreadnought too and uh, Psycho and Hypermetabolism. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Uh, what is... Uh... A mystery for me is that we start with the with the green neural motivator and the red plasma scoring, but we want the super dreadnought two that requires two blue technologies and one yellow. Yeah. So it's a it's a long way to get to to the super dreadnoughts, uh, and I think the inheritance systems faction technology that allows us to pay two additional resources and then we can ignore any prerequisites is a way to solve this issue. I just don't think that the yellow tech tree is the right way to go for the Lysix. So I think it's some, some kind of trap or uh, a misleading way to play this to play this faction in an effective way. Uh, and I think that is one of the weaknesses here, that we start with two, te- two good, really good technologies. Mm-hmm. They just don't support uh, the need for getting the Super Dreadnoughts. No, I agree. Uh, yeah, and that's why I think in my opinion, that Lysix is an interesting race. It's just not obvious for me uh, which route you have to go, and uh, and yeah, they have those uh, weaknesses in the uh, in the route that I think is um, interesting to to try to uh, to solve. Mm. Yeah, and I also don't think that inheritance systems is uh, the way to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you have uh, one tech, yellow tech skip, and you get another, and then inheritance, and then you stop with the dreadnought two, uh, then you could say that it's maybe uh, been uh, worth the while. But I think, uh, yeah, as mentioned, uh, that uh, hyper and psychoarchaeology helps you um, mitigate other weaknesses. So I would much rather have them uh, than. Uh, the inheritance and pay the extra two bucks uh, every time. Mm. So I think, in my opinion, Lysix, a lot of tech and thereby a lot of resource in your home in in your slice is yeah the way to go uh, with them. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and I guess that is also one of the weaknesses because it, they truly require a lot of resources for yeah. both tech and uh, producing those dreadnoughts. Yeah, um, but we also need influence to get command tokens. So we need a lot of everything. And I think that is, uh, I think they, they need it more than most of the other factions, yeah. both resources and influence. Yeah, and, but, yeah, and that's, uh, exa- I totally agree. And that's why I think that, yeah, after this uh, first round of, yeah, also in the first round, uh, I would almost every time uh, go for either leadership or technology. Uh, yeah. Not any of the others uh, should be some edge cases uh, trade if there's a public, but other would probably take it. So yeah, the technology and the leadership would be my two preferred um, strategy cards uh, throughout the game. Uh, yeah, to to uh, mitigate those weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, some good points. Yes. 
That is uh, my notes for the strengths and weaknesses. Do you have anything uh, you would like to add? Uh, yeah, it, it, it could come in here. Uh, you have a fa- uh, your faction promise and note mm. is really, really, really good. Uh, it's uh, you get a yeah the player who gets it get a, a command counter uh, in the status phase, and it doesn't cost you anything. Mm. So out and sell it every time you can. It should it should uh, be able to sell it for two trade goods. Uh, yeah, it's free influence if they have to buy it themselves. So so sell it to whoever has trade goods, mm. and that is also a, a way to. Um, to get trade goods in your on your uh, on your sheet and keep them keep them safe <laughs> to to a public there's uh, four publics uh, where need uh, trade goods uh, the five trade goods and the three trade goods three influence three resources uh, so so bank up your trade goods whenever you get them you you should have enough resources in your slice so so trade goods keep them and thereby you can come around that weakness that you are only a two commodity faction. So so out and sell your faction promise on it. I think it's a strength and it uh, helps you um, with the trade goods you otherwise have uh, troubles getting. Mm. I think that's a really good point. Yes, that uh, truly helps with the, the economy. Yeah. 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 Keep them. Keep save them. them. You, you should not build for them. No. 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 Cool. All right. That was it for uh, strengths and weaknesses. So uh, let's move on to the hero. And uh, Top, what do you think of the hero? Is it one of the better ones? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is one of the better ones, I think. Uh, yeah, you can move your flagship and uh, your dreadnoughts to uh, an empty system, and, there, and from there you can go out and uh, terrorize the, the neighborhood. Uh, it's both a, a Kingslayer a hero, and uh, I think it can. Uh, help you with the two-pointer if it's control objective or something like that. So there's the sixes you're extremely good at taking and holding systems. So so yeah, I think it's a really good hero. And uh, yeah, you can move your Dreadnought and your flagship. And uh, in that sentence, uh, I also think that the flagship is also a, it's not the best flagship in the, in the whole game, but it's a really good flagship. It uh, rolls two and a five is the best. And uh, you have this uh, built-in uh, grabs and laser systems in the flagship, so so that's really really good. And uh, if you have it uh, with your dreadnought, so a lot of hits on uh, non-fighter ships, it could take a lot of fleets out, uh, all the capital ships in in in, in one or two uh, combat rounds. So yeah, a really good flagship, and I think you should uh, go for it if you can uh, after you build your dreadnoughts. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. I I totally agree. And uh, yeah, five capacity and uh, with your five dreadnoughts, hopefully you have uh, 15 pieces of plastic you uh, take on with your uh, when you pop your hero. So that's a lot of uh, yeah, ground forces or fighters uh, to a huge battle or to uh, take uh, those uh, planets you need to to take uh, for a two-pointer. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, a strong hero, strong flagship. And especially if you want to take someone else's home system, then I mean, getting that fleet directly, maybe adjacent to that system, um, then yeah, I don't think there are any other factions that are as good as uh, yeah, taking a home system uh, if they need to do that. No, a lot of ground forces and uh, some fighters to win the space combat, and then just uh, you need your ground forces to uh, survive uh, some rounds, and then you just harrow, bombard, bombard, bombard. So so yeah, a really really. Uh, uh, a scary fleet uh, to be next to uh, when the the hero pops. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't know where it pops. It where the fleet uh, arrives. I mean, all the empty systems, uh, all, all systems without enemy units and enemy ships in them are open. So you can just go there uh, without any movement restrictions. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, let's move on to uh, what technologies to research. And I'm really looking forward to the segment here because <laughs> there are so many ways we can go. And uh, would you like to uh, to go ahead and uh, share yours, and then I will uh, we'll come back to my path afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, let's see if the uh, yeah, the we, same. Yeah, we haven't co- coordinated or, or talked about this, so uh, there could be some surprises for us as well. So that's uh, that's awesome. 
Uh, yeah, as I mentioned uh, a few times uh, earlier in the video, I think that I would go for psychoarchaeology and uh, hypermetabolism. It should be reachable uh, in round two, uh, either by taking a, taking one in the first round and then hypermetabolism in the second round. And from there, I would go uh, for the super dreadnought two. Uh, and uh, yeah, that requires a yellow and a two blue. Mm -hmm. So we would also like uh, some tech skips in our uh, in our slice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yellow and uh, and the blue. Uh, so yeah, if there's a yellow tech skip, then we don't need a, a yellow. Uh, and yeah, if so, a so blue, uh, we can skip someone there. But if there's not a yellow, I would uh, take a scan link uh, to see if I can. Yeah, to uh, to explore some planets. If I need to be lucky uh, around that, I don't think that. Yeah, the extra resource in the building uh, is. I don't think it's an. I think uh, Lysix can uh, come around that uh, since they have a lot of resources. So I would much rather have that uh, a Joker that could be in the scan link if I really need uh, to try to get an. Uh, a relic fragment or uh, a planet attachments or something like that. So, so if I need uh, the yellow, I would probably go for the scan link. And the blue, uh, yeah, uh, depending on the map, uh, dark tab energy, uh, dark energy tab if there's a lot of empty systems or, or anti mass if there's some, uh, yeah, asteroid fields uh, I need to. Uh, uh, to move into and and then the uh, gravity drive is also uh, yeah always good uh, so our carrier can move with our super dreadnought tools so that would be my tick route yeah yeah that's uh yeah so we have some similar similarities here uh that's great yeah uh, i think uh, it very much depends on the map what the technology i would like to go for first um but if i have a green tech skip planet then I would go for hypermetabolism as the first one, uh, possibly in, in round two, uh, unless I could ready it uh, in other ways in, uh, in round one. Um, but I also really like the idea of dark energy tap. Uh, and also prioritize that over Sarween tools, because I think we can get some pretty good stuff in uh, those frontier tokens that will benefit us even more than that production discount uh, that the Sarween tools gives us. Um, and then I, I'm actually a little bit uh, back and forth on should I go for gravity drive that is a pretty strong technology uh, but I also think sling relay is because it is also an action and since we don't have that many actions because we are starved a little bit on command tokens I really think uh, sling relay could be a, a strong choice as well also if we get the super dreadnought twos and we then we don't really need we don't really need carriers at all so if we can get our ground forces around the game board with uh, the movement that those dreadnoughts gives us, then uh, I don't see the same need for gravity drive. Uh, but of course, you have a carrier we start with that could potentially need an extra boost. Uh, but I think that is some of the dilemmas I would sit with when I consider what technologies to get. Uh, and I think it's very situational uh, on, on that current game. Uh, so go for hypermetabolism as soon as possible. And then I totally agree, go for, uh, for, for Super Dreadnought 2s. Um, that would be the goal for, the tech goal for, for this faction, I think. Um, but I think we should also talk a little bit more about the other faction technology, the inheritance systems here. Um, I saw someone recommend getting that simply because we could then go for Super Dreadnought 2 uh, without uh, the, the required technologies, but it could also give us access to war suns. Uh, and I mean, I think with both <laughs> super dreadnoughts and war suns. <laughs> Is that something you have a, a few points on? We haven't prepared this. Uh, no, no. Um... Yeah, it is tempting, and we Lysix uh, usually uh, have a lot of resources. Yeah. So, so it's, it's it should not be. A... Complicators for us to to build the warsons um, and yeah, the warsons uh, six capacity uh, the four bombardment with the plasma and uh, and hero still working with them. Uh, yeah, you might 
go without Gretna Tusen. Ja, it go, could... go drive directly for the Warsons. Yeah. It, uh, it, it makes your hero uh, a lot less potent, uh, but, but yeah, you could play around that. Uh, I haven't uh, honestly considered that because the Dreadnoughts are so strong, but yeah, inheritance systems and uh, then directly to Warsons. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't even need the the commander then, because the Warsons can still bombard on planets with the PDSs. Yeah. So it is, but it, it just feels a little wrong. I mean, you have those super dreadnoughts, uh, and then go for Warsons instead. But I guess it is just an alternative uh, alternative way to play them. Uh, I I haven't considered them either. It was only because of that single comment. I think, yeah, it could be. Yeah, 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 and I think that. If you if you uh, if you skip the super dreadnought and the idea behind that, yeah, and you don't need the commander then, so uh, yeah, go inheritance system and Warson and maybe yeah, gravity drive to to get your carrier with you. Uh, so send your Warson and a carrier out. Then you have a uh, ten capacity and you yeah bombard all day long. Yeah, uh, four bombardment uh, and with hero and. Uh, Yeah, some fighters. So, yeah, that yeah. could be. Uh, it, yeah, I think it could be a fun way to play them, but uh, but I haven't considered it, uh, and I haven't tried it either. <laughs> so I don't know. Me neither. Uh, but uh, but but the the only advantage I see of having the super dreadnoughts is that you will get more hit points because you have more ships and they can sustain damage. So where uh, Warzone only <laughs> have two hit points, then three dreadnoughts that cost the same, right? Twelve uh, resources. They will have six uh, hit points in the. Yeah, and uh, they have the same capacity, but. Uh, yeah, and the yeah, same capacity. And you can yeah, see, yeah, yeah. you can sit here and do the math, yeah. but if you put a, a warson and uh, and a carrier with gravity drive, then you have uh, 12 capacity. Uh, yeah, uh, stack a lot of fighters in, and uh, you then you have a lot more capacity in the, than three dreadnoughts. Yeah. Uh, so so. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, it. Yeah, it, it could be worth a try at least. Uh, yeah. yeah, you need to have. Uh, yeah, I, I think the, the yellow tech skip would be um, uh, good here. Psycho, the yellow tech skip, then uh, inheritance systems uh, after hyper. I think you should. Yeah, yeah. I I think I still would go uh, psycho and uh, hyper, and then the yellow tech skip and. Thereby, it's a two. It requires two, so oh. gold needs Scanlink or, or Sawin anyways. Yeah, you need uh, yeah some up there. Yeah. Uh. So you you need some tech to get inheritance systems and yeah, but but yeah, it could it could be fun. Yeah. 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 Uh, skip the dreadnoughts and then go. Uh, go more sense. Yeah. yeah. I think it will surprise most of the other players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh. Yeah. But uh, but speaking of uh, unit upgrades, we are we are also pretty close to getting a cruiser too. Uh, we have uh, the the green and the red technology, so we just need a yellow um, for the cruiser too. And yeah, that could also help a little bit with some cheaper units and not if we're going into war signs, I think. No, no. But uh, yeah, and you have the yellow uh, either way to get the dreadnoughts. Yeah. So you should be able to take for cruiser too. But yeah. I'd, It's still cheap, and and I don't think you need the. No, I, I no. No. Yeah. I was just thinking as the, the extra capacity, you just have capacity one, right, and then you have the dreadnoughts with capacity two. Then we we almost make up for for carriers here. Yeah, I would I would I would uh, take the carrier with gravity drive uh, okay. along. Yeah. Uh, then you have, or if I should have uh, some capacity there, then I would, yeah, uh, upgrade the carrier. Hmm? Uh, if it's the two yeah. unit upgrade, uh, yeah. then I will upgrade the carrier and have even more capacity. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we have the two blue technologies anyway, so we can. Upgrade yeah, yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, uh, yes. and I, I think that's yeah, that's a lot of check to be made just to to get to the dreadnought two and to the hyper metabolism as we agreed should be uh, a route uh, for this. This so so um, I, I I think that's. Yeah. A lot of uh, takes on the plate, so so I wouldn't go for cruise two. No, no, no. Yeah, there are. Uh, yeah, 
But we already said that, right? We, we need a lot of technology to uh, to unlock this faction, so uh, yeah. so get as strong as it can be. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Anything else to add about the technology? Uh, I just have to say that, uh, in, as in the start, uh, you you uh, wanted to skip psychoarchaeology if you could. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and the the main reason for 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 me to to uh, check that check <laughs> research, uh, yeah. Yeah, research, yeah, research that check yeah sorry um, is because uh, it, it helps us uh, getting trade goods yeah, that's if we have the, the tech skips yeah. but yeah it's just to uh, yeah stuff that hole in the boat uh, if there comes a, a, a trade good uh, uh, objective mm. and uh, and yeah of course we uh, if we use the tech skips we don't need to use the planners so so um, if you have uh, tech skips in our slides i would definitely go for that just yeah to use the planners resources and uh, the tech skips and also uh, be able to to get trade goods it if if there's uh, the, the the 10 trade goods comes out uh, then uh, no one would trade with you no uh, any races and uh, if you have uh, this, uh, you can bank a, a trade goods every round, and you can you can not be uh, held out of the ten trade goods if you have this. So so you could make some trade goods every round and uh, stack them up. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't uh, get close to them. Not as nomad, for an example, that can get a lot of trade goods without trading. Yeah. Or Hakan, uh, you can always not uh, trade with Hakan, but everyone has a price yeah so so yeah so psychoarchaeology psycho is uh, for for the possibility of uh, getting trade goods yeah that's the main reason why i should uh, recommend that yeah well i think that's <coughs> a, a really good reason to to think ahead and uh, get ready for for a potential spend objective uh, a lot later in the game that's a good point yeah cool I think that was it for uh, for technology. Yeah. So uh, let's get into how to win with this faction. And uh, what would your overall strategy be, so so we can win? Uh, yeah. <laughs> get to ten point first. Burr. Burr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as we have mentioned before. Uh, List Lysix is uh, really, really good at, at combat and uh, controlling objectives, uh, taking planets, uh, yeah, staying in the in persistence or something like that because they have uh, a good, good fleet and they have the resources to build a, a mighty fleet. So, so all those objectives is uh, not a problem for them. Um, the spend objectives is um, an Achilles heel for, for the Lysix, I think. Uh, and some of that uh, we try to uh, mitigate uh, with, in my opinion, the psychoarchaeology. There you can bank up some trade goods uh, on your own, and and uh, with the hyper metabolism you get that extra command counter. So so you could be able to spend the three command tokens because you yeah you get three, and then you just have a a lousy round. Uh, but but then you would be able to score that objective. Mm -hmm. uh, the influence objective is also uh, uh, not really good for, for Lysix, but now you could also use your trade goods. Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah, I really think you should, uh, yeah, psychoarchaeology again to, 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 to get the trade goods that can help you score the, the influence and trade good objectives. Um, so in general, the spend objectives is not Lysix, that's Lysix's biggest uh, weakness, I think, and we try to come around them with the, with the hyper metabolism and uh, and with the psychoarchaeology and by selling your faction promissory note a lot for trade goods, then you can be in the game for those objectives and and all the other objectives. I think you are a top contender to to uh, to accomplish um, and and um, they assimilate. Mm -hmm. uh, faction ability where you uh, yeah. get to uh, replace PDSs and space docks um, when you uh, take control over planets uh, owned by another player uh, is <laughs> really good uh, if there's uh, structure objectives uh, you don't want to if you don't want to take construction and you are really good at taking planets 
Yeah. Ta-da. Yeah. Uh, so if there's not uh, such objectives coming out, then you don't do it. Uh, but if there is, yeah, say sorry to your neighbor and uh, take their structures. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, you're the only faction that can do that. So that's a, a way to come around that uh, objective. So so um, yeah. yeah, they have their weaknesses, but I think the tech and uh, and the faction abilities can can solve those mid weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. And just one more thing about uh, whenever we take over a space dock, for instance, then we actually get to produce units uh, at that very same space dock uh, at the end of that tactical action. Yeah, uh, and that's pretty sweet. Um, but I, I, I wish I saw that assimilate faction ability being used more. Uh, but maybe it's just the games I have uh, I've played where it seems because it is very powerful. But I don't. I just don't see it used that often. So in that sense, maybe it's some kind of underdog faction ability, in my opinion. Um, yeah. 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 I've, it's it's so rare. I see it. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, but but it's also if if you are next to Lysix and there's no uh, objective of some sort and they just t- take your planets for. For your structures, or just to annoy you, that's also <laughs> annoying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, so yeah, it's not uh, that often the scene being used, but but if if it comes up, yeah, then you can be sure uh, Lysix construction there. Yeah. It's easier for them to take a planet with the with the structures on. Yes. So someone else, you can you can lock uh, Lysix out of this uh, objective. Because they can just simply uh, take the structures you just have played yeah. with the construction. Yeah, and you can even bombard on those <clears throat> planets if it is uh, PDS uh, structures we're going for. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, clearing the infantry out of the way. That's uh, yeah. So so. Lysix is not, uh, in my opinion, as uh, flexible as uh, the Nomad uh, because of all that trade they can use to anything. But but I think. They are not as uh, straightforward, uh, and and they have those uh, weaknesses as we have mentioned. But I also think that they can solve them. Mm-hmm. Um, so so uh, and and when they are a strong uh, race uh, uh, with the dice, uh, they can build a lot of plastic. Then they are um, they are uh, they should be a feared race on the board mm-hmm. just because they can. Uh, demolish your uh, fleets or, or ground forces so they can take you out of the game so so um, a, a pretty strong uh, complex in my opinion uh, and uh, interesting race uh, yeah yeah and then now you say complex because the faction abilities by themselves are very simple but playing them is the complex part of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's uh, I really like that because when I walk through all of the things they could fucking easy, 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 easy. Okay, but how do I approach the first round and really get a good first round here? That was the complex part of it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that was a funny little discovery there. <laughs> yeah, the abilities are is easy to understand and yeah. uh, I think uh, yeah, easy to to know how to uh, how they work. But yeah, to get them yeah. working optimally, mm. uh, I think it's a complex part. Uh, yeah, you should be able to score most secret objectives also. Uh, uh, you are not a megatol race, uh, but but you are. Yeah, you have a strong uh, fleet. You have a lot of fleet, uh, so you should be able to uh, to get some imperial points uh, yeah. throughout the game. Uh, yeah, you're not the easiest one to uh, to kick out of Megatol. So, so uh, if you are in Megatol, the politics, and then the Imperial card, you should be able to to get a, an extra point or two uh, for the win. And and I think you would need them. Yeah, and it's also really good to have those six influence on Megatol Rex whenever mm-hmm. leadership is played uh, to help with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, uh, so definitely go for Megatol Rex during the game. Maybe not as the first one, but uh, take it from someone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be a strong, uh, yeah, gatekeeper for the Megatol Rex. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Especially for yeah, for the for the influence. Uh, yeah, for the rest of the game. Yeah. 
And I think I would also spread out a little more as the Lysix player, uh, maybe try to grab both equidistant systems uh, and hold them uh, to get the extra planets, hopefully, and uh, get that extra resources and influence to uh, to play the game. Yeah, but I mean, if we lose a planet, we can easily take it back, right? Uh, and those dreadnoughts are a little bit, yeah, hard to uh, to fight against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, but but uh, there's no faction that is so strong that they can uh, uh, win against the whole table. No, so, no, so, not at all. So no. if you're both on the uh, megatol and you want both the uh, equidistant oh, yeah. and uh, I didn't mean I didn't mean both. Uh, I meant maybe just before going for megatol, trying to have oh, an yeah, extra yeah, system, yeah. Uh, borrow system from one of the neighbors. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Just good luck. And the whole, the whole world is ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that, that's right. Nope. nope. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, should be, any... yeah you should be able to win with Lysix. Uh, it shouldn't... Yeah, they, they, they should be a strong contender for the win uh, whenever you're playing them, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe not the strongest faction, but they are up there, I think. Especially if the control objectives come out, or you get, and not the <laughs> the spend objectives. Yeah. 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 Yes. Anything else uh, about how to win? No. No. Me neither. I guess that was it for uh, for the discussion video. Thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for watching, and I hope that I uh, will see you in the next one.